Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is Le Simon 2022. One day race, semi-classic here in Belgium. And we got a host of great talent and we have marvelous sprinters. Albacine Phoenix, Tim Merlier is here. And then, of course, Fabio Jakobsen from Quick Step is here. So we know with these two quality sprinters, and when you look at today's stage, Today could easily be a sprint. Now, Tim Merler, he won last year here in a field sprint, but it was a little bit different final. It was a flat run in. It was the first time that I had seen Mark Cavendish last year start showing some spark of that old sprint form coming. He had the speed last year, but he didn't have quite the quick instinct to pick the right wheels, and he lost out to Tim Merler last year. But it's a different finish today, slightly uphill, 1.2K about. And I would call it, taking a guess from the video when I'm watching it, I would say it's probably about 4%. Not super steep, but certainly there and a slightly complicated because they have a bit of a chicane when you start getting around 500 meters to go. But when the action comes on with 95K, bam, crash already. And directly you could see why this is a crazy road. We're in St. Belgium. They got the middle crack going. They got cracks every 10, 15 feet from the concrete blocks. Then you look over to the right and left side of the road, and there's going to be a crack followed by cobblestones, followed by more concrete. And then you throw in that everybody's nervous, and they're all curb to curb, 20 wide. There's going to be a crash, and it happens immediately. I mean, I flip the race on, and the crash happens. And it's blocked up the road and everybody's going down. In Belgium, we always had to deal with these issues with the crack down the center of the road and something happening on each side of the road. You're never safe when you're racing here if you're on the outside of either the right or left and far outside and you're definitely not safe in the center of the road because that crack here in Belgium exists all the time the valley of death. With 50K to go thereabouts, I see my man, Victor Campernotz. He's back after putting on a show over the weekend. He's back in the race, and he's going to put on a show here. So make sure you turn in, tune in and watch today's race because it's a spectacular show all the way from about 43 kilometers to the finish. Now, at 43, we're going to see Chris Lawson there, and he rides for Total Energy, and he starts having a knee issue. I'm going to guess here, purely an educated guess, that he hit his knee on the handlebar. And this is how cruel the sport is. Remember, throughout most of this race, there's times when you can get back on. Now, all of a sudden, at 43K to go, when you look at Christopher back there suffering with the knee pain, trying to get it to relieve and then get back to the group, this is when the action really flares up. Now, there's a group of six already up the road and a group two chase and another group of two chasing them, but they never stayed off that long and they've already been caught by this point in the race. And when the racing comes on for Kristoff, he's going to suffer for these next five kilometers because as he's suffering with the knee pain, now he's going to suffer with the leg pain because the group up front, they're eight wide, they're pushing hard. You'll hear the whistle if you're watching the video, and that means there's something dangerous. Whenever you hear that whistle on TV, you better perk up. And if you're in the bike race, you better look up right away. That was one of the first things that I learned when racing in Europe. When you hear a whistle, no matter how much you're suffering, that head better lift up to figure out what that whistle's for. We'll see the hand raise in the center of the group there. The whistle blows. The ocean parts ways as the peloton splits for the island in the middle. Everybody makes it through safe. Then they come back and they're eight wide again, fighting for the right hand turn. As the right hand turn comes up, we understand now why they were all curb to curb. It's a super narrow right turn followed by lefts, rights, hairpin turns right turn onto a cobblestone wet section that's super narrow with gutters on each side with curbs on each side that can take a rider down in an instant. For these next five kilometers, the action is intense from 43 all the way to about 38, 37 kilometers. It's on crazy back there. When they come out of the cobblestones, we see Alpacine Phoenix, three riders at the back, and they're not going to make it back up to the front group. There's at least one quick step rider back there, and we'll see Christopher Lawless back there trying to get back on. His knee was hurting before, but now his legs are burning, and he's not going to make it back up to the front group because all the way up at the front, probably three football fields up there now away from Christopher, is the race is split 
getting apart with Mateo Trenton, UAE Team Emirates throwing down hard. Now he's throwing down and he's going to split it to about 25 guys. And you know this group has a shot of making it to the line because my man Victor Campanot comes up to the side there of Mateo Trenton. Trenton looks over left. Victor looks over right. Trenton gives him the little head nod, and you know when you see that because everybody gives Victor Campanas the head nod because nobody likes to ride hard on the pedals like my man Vic does. Now those two get it going, and they're riding hard. This group is about 25 strong, and multiple teams are represented all over the place. We're talking quick step, have at least two riders in there with Cherney and Bert Van Leerberg. AG2R had at least four riders in this group of 25. Oliveira Nason will flat out, unfortunately, because he looks strong in this group. But they're still represented by one of their top riders, DeWolf. And Stan is riding on good form. A lot of Sudol, same thing. Massive numbers, at least four. And it's my man, Victor Campanas, like I told you. He's got some help back there. And Lotto's on the front trying to make this group split and get some time and get something happening in today's race and it's on all the way to the finish so you better go back and watch it after you get done watching the butterfly effect because Victor Campanots is putting on a show. Mateo Trentin is absolutely trying to blow this race apart. And as far as I can see, he's the only one represented from UAE Team Emirates and he is still happy to blow this race apart. Now he's up there fighting like crazy to keep the group gelling and working together. But the problem is, is you got Tim Miller. He's in there. He's got one teammate with DeBunk. So Albacene Phoenix have their top number one sprinter on their team in this group. But he doesn't have a whole lot of help up there with only one teammate. They're not working. And of course, Cherney and Bart Van Leerberg, they don't want to work because Fabio Jakobsen, the most dominant sprinter so far of 2022, he's in the group behind in the peloton and he did not make the split. So Quick Step are in a dilemma here. They got two riders represented in the front group. They got the number one sprinter in the world right now. And my professional opinion with Fabio Jakobsen back there, but he doesn't look like he has a whole lot of help around him. So this is when things get tricky if you're talking about quick step. Now remember, Albacene Phoenix have two in the front group and it's Tim Merlaire. And if he's in the front group, that means they're not going to work in the back. So every time the camera comes to the back of the peloton and shows us who's working back there, we see the small team Uno you know, X on the front trying to bring this stuff back together. But up front, we're talking about 25 guys and they are all hitters. But as I always say here on the Butterfly Effect, 25 guys is a lot to have gelling all together. So the gas is on and off with attacks coming numerous ways, left and right in numbers and singles, everything getting brought back, then sitting up. And the field is always close by at 30 seconds, 40 seconds back there as the front group is still trying to get away with my man Victor Campanots throwing in attacks. It takes till about 24 kilometers to go. And we'll see Mateo Trentin throw in a hard dig. This will finally split the group up and cause nine guys to go up the front. Tim Merlaire from Albacene Phoenix didn't make the split. He's chasing as hard as he can. We'll see him throw his elbow out there. But guess what? None of the guys behind him, and we're talking nine or ten riders sitting on his wheel, none of them is going to take a pull with you, Tim. So that group automatically goes back to the field. And we're left up front with an elite group of nine riders riders. We're talking fabulous guys. Dries DeBunk from Albacene Phoenix made it. Stan DeWolf's up there from AG2R. Joseph Cherney from Quick Step along with his teammate Bert Van Leerberg's there. Louis Valig and Intermarche who's been riding fabulous in this early 2022 season made the front group of nine Campernods, he is flying. Lotto Sudol is represented. Matteo Trentin, of course, he's up there. He caused the split. Hugo Hofstetter from Arkea Samsic. He is the fast man, and he is a threat in this group of nine. And Dries Van Gestel from Total Energy is on flying form in today's race. These nine guys are putting on a show up front. The only guy that's sitting on in this group of nine is the two quick step riders, Cherney and Van Leerberg. Those two riders are sitting on there hoping it comes back because again, Fabio Jakobsen is in the back of the group. After big attacks from Hugo Hofstetter, followed by Victor Campanos, DeBunt, Hugo again, Trent Team will throw in another attack, Cherney will get dropped. Now it's a group of eight up front. 
Cherney gets caught by the peloton behind immediately. He's on the front, but his legs are blowing. The peloton still holding that front group of now eight riders with a gap of about 30 or 40 seconds. Now with 10 kilometers to go, Tim Merler, not only did he get dropped from the front group, but he goes off-roading a little cyclocross action, just avoiding a hard crash and jumps back on the bike with a teammate there trying to get him back to the peloton, but he won't get on. When that happens, automatically you know now up front DeBont has the green light to start working and trying to make this group go all the way to the finish. With about nine kilometers to go, we see the gap bloom back up and now it's 40 seconds. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm thinking for sure this eight group of eights going to the line. There's no doubt about it. That gap just went from about 15, 20 seconds now up to 45 everybody's blown in the back. All the teams that were chasing are off the front now, and we're down to Trek Sega Freda with like one rider up there and a you know X rider that's somehow up there still pulling. They're doing a fabulous job for such a small team, but the gap is starting to balloon out until the group of eight start playing some games again with 2.8 kilometers to go when they hit the last cobblestone section. Mateo Trentin, the big favorite in this group of eight, he starts pulling on the front during the cobblestone section, but he's not pulling hard. He's just keeping everything under control for 500 meter section of cobbles. They'll come back out on the street and they're still playing a little bit of cat and mouse. The Peloton's coming back, but with 1.2 kilometers to go when we start the final climb up to the finishing sprint, we don't exactly know where the Peloton are, but I know for sure they gotta be close because this group of eight are just backing off the pedals the whole time. And then it's Debont from Albacine Phoenix that throws in the first attack. It's immediately followed and chased down by my man Victor Campanas. And then DeWolf AG2R throws in another attack, but it's brought back from Victor. And then right away, Matteo Trentin says, I've had enough of this. I'm going to the front and I'm going to control everything. With about 500 meters to go, there's this crazy chicane. The group is going wide, but they're not pedaling hard. And you know the peloton's bearing down on these guys fast with 200 meters to go. It's Van Gessel that throws in the first attack from Total Energy. As he throws in the attack, you see the peloton coming up on the back of these guys, and they're hot on the heels. And then Matteo Trentin starts his acceleration with about 170, 550 meters to go. He leads through the left turn, powers hard on the pedals to take a fabulous win. And Hugo Hofstetter did a great job but could not come up with the form to beat Matteo Trenton. He had to settle for second on today's stage. Did bond Albacine Phoenix. He gets third rounds out the podium spot. My man Victor Campanots will have to settle for six. But we know from today's race that over the weekend's crash didn't have a big effect on his form because he looked fabulous in today's race. It was a great show for a semi-classic. If you get the chance, make sure you turn it on and watch the whole race. If you're in a hurry, watch it from 43K to go to the finish because it was fabulous from that marker all the way to the finish line. A great semi-classic victory here for Matteo Trentin, UA Team Emirates. Congratulations, and I'll see you real soon on the Butterfly Effect. Make sure you like and subscribe. See you guys later.